Good Monday morning. Uh, today we are talking about the importance of teaching as a developer. Today I'm going to try to make the case that teaching is the best way of learning. I'm also going to talk about how teaching strengthens your team. I'm going to make the case that everyone should teach. And finally, I'm going to give you some ideas for teaching opportunities in your life as a developer. That is what we are going to talk about today. I am MPJ and you are watching Fun Fun Function. This video is part of a series where we talk about the top 8 developer habits as chosen by you. If you want to check out the full series playlist you can do so here or in the episode description. Alright, first point. Teaching is the best way of learning. One of my absolute favorite quotes is this. Writing is nature's way of exposing how sloppy your thinking is. Oh, it's so good! It's so good! It's so good! Let me say that again, uh, partly because quoting people makes me feel smart and also because it is really good. Writing is nature's way of exposing how sloppy your thinking is. This quote is by Gwyndon, which is an American cartoonist. And uh, the, I was first clued on to this quote uh, by A.G. Dubbs, who is an amazing speaker. You should check out her talks if you haven't yet. She had kind of tweeted a little and said that teaching is nature's way of exposing how sloppy your thinking is. In order to make another person understand something that is, that is in your head, you need to transfer a concept that is stuck in your head into another person's head. In order to do this, we use language. So you need to transfer the stuff that is in your head, the thoughts, into words. Words and language, that's our adapter to transferring thoughts between people. And we all have these unfinished thoughts in our heads. We think, oh yeah, this is, this is a good idea, I should really do this. And I, I, oh, I think this business idea, that's a really good thing. I think this would be a great library. I think this business idea would be a great thing. I think that this refactoring would be really good for a system. Or, mm, I think I get monads now. I think I get what polymorphism is. You have a thought and you have an idea that, mm, I have this now, I, I get it. A great way to test if you actually get it is to try to explain it to another person. Doing so will often fail miserably. And the reason it fails is because the thoughts that we had was not quite thought through. Putting a thought on paper requires you to do material meticulous thinking. Your thinking needs to be very clear in order for it to work on paper to turn it into words. There can be no room for vagueness. Communicating your thoughts just will expose flaws in those thoughts and that is why it is teaching is so good for learning. And you will detect this as you first start to formulate things into words, you will just find holes in your thinking. But there's even more because when you actually give this to someone else, you can actually check if they did understand you. Because people, people might nod and yes, 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 and you'll feel good because oh, you explain this complicated concept. And, and but if you actually ask them uh, and as try to oh. Can you try to explain this back to me or, or explain it back to, to John here? Then you will see that the person probably didn't get what you were talking about because you were not clear enough. And the reason you weren't clear enough is because your understanding was not clear enough. Because in order to craft a clear and understandable narrative, you, you will need to have very clear thinking about the subject. And some types of teaching, like posting in forums uh, and uh, uh, posting, posting YouTube videos, for instance, or posting blog posts, gives you the amazing, amazing teaching tool of critique. For example, you're struggling with understanding some concept. You, um, you're trying to nail down time complexity or polymorphism or uh, monads or functors or generators, uh, you know, whatever, something that is hard for you to understand. If you spend time to write a blog post about it, explaining it to someone else, 
you start to find the holes uh, and you kind of get like, oh, I think I get it now. I think I have this. And you post it. And a lot of people go, yeah, oh, yes, I, I finally understand this now. But then somebody comes along and says, oh, that is more experienced than you. And says, that, oh, this thing here, I, it's kind of right, but you, you need to think about this thing as well. So you find that as you push your knowledge out in the world, it will get, get like this pushback from more experienced people uh, until it is correct and full. Teaching is also the best way of learning because it is fundamentally helping other people and helping feels great. I talked about that in the previous episode of the series Getting Shit Done, but it, it, man, it deserves repeating because it kind of permeates a lot of these habits that we are, we are pack animals and we feel really good about helping other people in the pack. Or did you say herd animals? Is it pack animals or herd animals? Maybe primates aren't technically herd animals. But anyway, helping other people feels great and that will make you do the activity more and that will make you learn more. Teaching is the best way of learning because it is nature's way of exposing how sloppy your thinking is. And teaching also gives you feedback, like did my colleague get it or did the, my audience and readers uh, point out mistakes. And finally also, because you're a human, teaching just makes you happier. Okay, next point. Uh, teaching strengthens the team. If you've been following this channel for a while, you know that I, I'm big on fighting individualism. I really, really, really dislike the concept of this hero programmer. I think we're trending away from it, I'm pretty sure, but there still is this quite sticky myth of the super duper programmer. It's often a term that is like a 10x programmer. It, it's a person that knows like a lot of programming. They, uh, they are a lot smarter than everyone else. They can solve problems much faster. You can replace 10 people with this programmer. Rockstar programmer is another thing that the, the recruiters that are don't know what they are doing uses but like the, the point is like i'm not saying that these people don't exist because they do i've i've met them i work with them and they are so much better than me they are incredible and i don't fault them for that they're great but i think that they are one in a thousand at best and we can't we can't build an industry on that and also when it comes down to it, we are all humans. We can, like a person can, a person can juggle, like a, a person can juggle three balls and you can learn to juggle five balls. And I think that uh, a really good juggler can pull off like 10 balls, but no juggler can hold 100 balls uh, in the air at the same time. There are limits to what one person can do. A single programmer can only create a piece of software that is so complex in the end like eventually you will need a team you will need to figure out how to make software in a team that is how you make great software that's why it's so important that you get programmers that teaches other programmers to fish so to speak because if you have programmers in your team that goes oh, okay I've learned this new thing and they teach it to other programmers making them better and, and improving their levels and they are also of the attitude that oh I should teach my colleagues about this and help them and they will raise uh, the other colleagues back then you have this perpetual machine of learning that will improve on, and grow your team so you can't just hire these genius programmers that uh, just sit in a corner and, and code and produce and in the end you need people that interact and grow your team and focus on the people around them and making sure that they improve rather than their own output. That is important as well, but the team must grow. So instead of talking about these 10x programmers, I think that we should be talking about 100x teams. 
And I think a component of that is definitely that the team constantly teaches each other how to be better. All right, um, mm, third point, everyone should teach. When you're starting out in a subject, it, it's very comfortable to think that, oh, I don't know much about this subject, I'll better just listen to the teachers and, uh, and I, I can teach anyone. And that's probably correct for like the first five minutes. Once you have learned something, that means that you are senior to someone that has not yet learned that thing. If you see that someone else is struggling with a concept that you have figured out, even if it's just this tiny part of, of what you're trying to learn, then you, then you can still be a teacher in that domain. You should be a bit careful about that, of course, because you might have the wrong idea about something and then you might be teaching them the wrong idea as well. So it's good to exercise a little bit of restraint there, but not too much. Try to get into teaching as soon as possible. Another reason why everyone can teach is that programming knowledge is not linear. It's not like programming is a subject where you learn Lesson one, lesson two, lesson three, and then in order to understand more programming, you need to understand lesson four. And in order to understand lesson four, you will have to understand lesson three. It doesn't really work like that. It's more like this, uh, this tree, perhaps? You learn programming, a little bit of programming, and then like it starts to fork out into these different things, into databases, into AI, into uh, uh, into front-end development, into game development. So all of these programmers, they, they probably know the same stuff here, but the game programmer can probably be taught a lot uh, from the web developer and vice versa about stuff they don't know, even though they might be on the same level or this person might be here or this person might be here, but they are still like on completely different branches of the tree so they can still teach each other a lot even though like their seniority levels in their respective branches differ. Everyone should teach because you are senior to someone and programming knowledge is not linear. Finally to get you started I would like to just bleh, brainstorm and blurt out some teaching opportunities. I started out on forums. Forums are amazing, like Stack Overflow or like find a programmer forum, fo forum. Forums is also a very good place to start teaching because there will be more senior people around that can just point, point out mistakes in your teaching in case you're teaching somebody uh, the wrong thing. They can give you critique. Remember that we talked about critique before? It's great. At work you can give feedback. Uh, people, most people want feedback but they um, it's people don't want to give feedback it's as as people as programmers we are often starved for feedback we don't really know if we're doing good or, or if we're making mistakes it's providing your colleagues with feedback is a great way for them to improve and they are starved for it as long as you have a safe space where you can do it and the person you're sure that the person has actually actually wants to have feedback this is something that you have to build up and build up in your team but if you have that that is a great way of of teaching teaching other people a very narrow type of feedback at work is code review i'm a big proponent of code review it's just uh it's so amazing if you can get mandatory code review into your team and your culture because you can build so much on top of that if you have code review in place make sure that you use this as much as possible as a way to teach your colleagues about things don't look upon code review as a chore or something that you all I'll get to that when I have the time. Look at that as almost your most important task uh, of the week because that is that is how you build long-term knowledge in your team. Another teaching opportunity is speak 
speaking. Like we have all these good tech conferences that uh, want speakers and need speakers and uh, you can become one. Just apply for, uh, what's it called, call for proposals. The nice part about it is that you just do a pitch and then they say okay and then you have to prepare a talk and do it. It's very good for motivation and discipline. It's also great because it will give you a lot of contacts and people will come up to you afterwards and ask questions with, which will allow you to gauge uh, if people understood it and, uh, and if it's put online you can read the comments for um, uh, faults that people point out in your reasoning. It's just a very good way of improving. You might also do uh -huh, online videos. I have actually made a behind the scenes episode of how I make these. You can check that out here or in the episode description. That's just a few. Uh, you can probably think of more. Just try to put yourself in the frame of mind that I have. I have thoughts in my head that could possibly be useful to other programmers. How do I get them out and into their heads? So in summary, teaching is the best way of learning. It's nature's way of exposing how sloppy our thinking is. Teaching gives feedback. Teaching makes you happier. Teaching strengthens the team. Heroism sucks. Don't do the 10x programmer thing. Try to build a 100x team instead. Everyone should teach because you are senior to someone and also programming knowledge is not linear. We talked about some teaching opportunities, forums, uh, giving feedback at work, code reviews, speaking and doing videos. That is it. Go out and enjoy your week. You have just watched an episode of Fun Fun Function. I release these every Monday morning 0800 GMT. If you don't want to wait until next Monday, you can check out this episode here right now that Googles have selected using their machine learning voodoo for you. I am MPJ. Until next Monday morning, stay curious.